going to take over and tell you a little bit about our special guest here today. And uh, here is my Diana with Evita. Now, Evita is one of our ambassador animals from our education department. And she does go to schools and activities, events, so that people will get to know about chinchillas. Now, you might be familiar with chinchillas because people do have them as pets, but it's very important to be aware that they're absolutely endangered in the wild. While in our part of the world, um, chinchillas are not uh, harvested for their fur as they used to be, much of the world still tries to capture them for their fur. And their fur is extremely warm and beautiful. Now they live in South America in the high, high mountains uh, around Chile so that um, they live in the wild in rocky areas and in high areas where it's very cold. And because of that, they develop these um, increased follicles per um, fur per follicle so that um, they stay extremely warm. That's why they're in demand. And the higher the chinchillas go, the higher density of their follicles. Now, we don't want that. We want to discourage that. They're absolutely essential to the ecosystems in the wild where they take care of smaller animals. They eat a lot of seeds and things like that. So we also encourage conservation. On our activities page, which you can follow on our blog, we'll provide a link later on today, there are activities for coloring as well as diagrams and information about conservation where you can learn more. So if you're working from home, if you're teaching, or if you are doing lessons or just want to know more because this is the time to learn those things that you've always wanted to know about, you can find some links on our blog. And so you can learn more about chinchillas and Heather will go ahead and add a few details as I hold her so that you can take a good look. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and hold her all a little bit so you can see the back of her first. So this is Evita. Um, they do have different colors. We actually do have another chinchilla here. These are long-tailed chinchillas. And she's starting to get a little bit nervous already. So we might actually have to put her back shortly. And I will tell you also what happens because she does have all of those hairs per follicle. They do actually warm up pretty quickly. So even that, we even delimit the time that we have our animals out. So just showing you um, the care that we give our animals here at the zoo. She is, again, as Elidiana said, made to live in very cold weather. So her hair, her fur is something that's going to keep her warm up in the Andes Mountains where they do originate from. But of course in El Paso, she doesn't really need all of that fur, which she still will have, but we also wanna make sure that we do help, help her out and not necessarily try to have her body warm up as much as, as she would need to keep warm up in the Andes Mountains. These are part of our education animal collection. We do have an amazing volunteer team here at the El Paso Zoo that do help us also with these animals. And they do, uh, right now they're not coming in because of what's going on, but as soon as we're back to business, we do hope to have our team back in full force so that they can show you all, all of these animals that they have helped socialize and prepare for us to have out in the public and continue to spread our message of conservation. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and hand Levita back over to Lidiana, and Levita's gonna go ahead and start getting uh, back to her house in the back of uh, this area. She does have, um, let me quickly tell you about how the El Paso Zoo works. So we do have two separate animal collections here at the zoo. We do have our education animal collection, which is where Evita comes from, and then we have our exhibit collection. And that is a collection that you will see as you come here as a visitor and walk around the zoo. And they do have to be worked with differently. For instance, you're not gonna see one of our keepers holding one of our giraffes. That would be a funny sight to see uh, due to the size, but also the way that the animals are worked with. They are worked with differently. But our education animal collection is worked with where we do bring them out, we socialize them, we give them extra exercise, we do a lot of different things so that they are used to being around the public and that we can um, bring you that nature a little bit closer to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get ready to say goodbye to everybody and have hopefully you enjoyed our very first um, sofa safaris here at the El Paso Zoo. Again, it's work in progress, so any technical difficulties, we promise will be worked out, and uh, hopefully you'll join us today.